Is there any reason to continue prescribing thindamycin? or is it becoming a dying medication? You may remember learning in medical school that clindamycin is typically used for infections above the diaphragm, while metronidazole is used for infections below the diaphragm, and you'll see this all over the internet. Above the diaphragm, clindamycin preferred, below the diaphragm, metronidazole preferred. Go on Google Images and you can just see countless images of this. And yet in clinical practice, we don't actually really see this. We tend to actually just use metronidazole for everything whenever we're concerned that we need anaerobic coverage. And what's the reason for this? Well, it's because clindamycin is actually a pretty poor drug with a lot of side effects. And of course, the biggest one that we're all familiar with is the risk of C. diff infection. So you can see in this study right here, they actually compared different antibiotics uh, to clindamycin, and they found that clindamycin was associated with a nearly three-fold increased risk of C. diff infection, relative risk of 2.93, compared to other antibiotics in, in this study. And just looking at it uh, in a graphical depiction, you can see this is the relative risk or the odds ratio of C. diff infection compared to receiving no antibiotics. And you can see clindamycin is far and away above all of the other antibiotics in terms of its C. diff risk, uh, something uh, like an odds ratio of 26. Uh, compared to, you know, the ones that are a little less likely to cause C. diff down here. And on top of that, there's also uh, this concern for rising resistance to clindamycin among the predominant organisms that we're trying to treat. So for staph aureus, group A strep, group B strep, uh, and, and things like that. So for example, uh, in this study, there was 5% uh, rate of clindamycin resistance in 2009. And in just three years, uh, back in 2012, they found that the rates of resistance had increased to 29%. That begs the question, what is the resistance rates now? Have they just continued to trend in that direction? But you can find countless articles showing that there's you know, this increasing rate of clindamycin resistance in staph and strep species. So let's take a look at the actual indications for clindamycin. So here you can see all of the indications we may potentially prescribe clindamycin for, uh, but no longer are we following that clindamycin above the diaphragm uh, metronidazole below the diaphragm kind of thought process. Uh, in fact, really the only uh, things that we are using clindamycin for is something I mentioned in a previous video, in the cellulitis video, which is when we have concern for necrotizing soft tissue infection or if we have concern for toxic shock syndrome. So why do we use it in these specific uh, instances? The reason is because it's thought that clindamycin can suppress the amount of toxin production, which is kind of a, a key part of the pathogenesis of these infections. And so we use it predominantly for the toxin suppression. In terms of using clindamycin for just MRSA coverage or MRSA cellulitis or an abscess, we try to avoid it as much as possible, basically because of the, the reasons I mentioned earlier, which is the high rates of C. diff and the increasing rates of resistance. But uh, let's go back to the toxin suppression. So clindamycin uh, has a known ability to suppress the production of toxins by certain bacteria. And how does it do that? So the, the way it does it is by inhibiting protein synthesis in bacteria. And it actually binds to that 50S ribosomal subunit. You may remember learning that in medical school. And that's how it starts to inhibit the protein synthesis. However, there is actually kind of a new kid on the block that is starting to take over the role that clindamycin was playing. And um, well, I guess it's not so much of a new kid on the block as it is just being used for a different function now, but linezolid, right? So linezolid actually has also been found to inhibit bacterial protein synthesis, also by binding to the 50S ribosomal subunit. This prevents the bacteria from producing toxins and helps in the pathogenesis of toxic shock syndrome and necrotizing soft tissue infections. Another advantage of linezolid is that it has a bioavailability of 100% when it's taken orally, and it doesn't have uh, that high you know, C. diff risk that C. Uh, clindamycin has. So lots of advantages of potentially using linezolid. And then you add on top of that, it's also got that MRSA coverage, and it's very effective with low rates of resistance to uh, linezolid. This is an article from uh, EM Crit, but it was basically analyzing the use of linezolid in toxic shock syndrome. And you can see there is a study they cited showing the antibiotic effects on the growth of staph aureus and the production of toxic shock syndrome toxin. And here on this bottom graph, you can see this is the toxic shock syndrome uh, toxin production. 
And on the bottom here is Linezolid and Clindamycin. And you can see both of them did a very, very good job at suppressing that toxin production compared to no treatment, vancomycin, or nafcillin, which were up here. So as there's been this uh, rising knowledge of linezolid uh, being used for this purpose, we've started to see more studies uh, looking into clindamycin versus linezolid. So in this uh, study, there were 1,095 patients uh, with group A strep. 76% of them received clindamycin and 24% received linezolid. And the receipt of linezolid was not associated with a statistically significant absolute risk reduction of in-hospital mortality compared to clindamycin. So linezolid was 9.8% versus clindamycin at 7%, and the p-value was 0.76. So this actually has led to some more debate on whether we should be using more linezolid in replacement of clindamycin. And I highly recommend you read this article uh, because it kind of has a back and forth between two different arguments. So one being that we should continue using clindamycin, whereas the other side of the argument is that linezolid should replace clindamycin. And it has a lot of the evidence and uh, you know data to support the different arguments, which is really fun to read. So in terms of the arguments for continuing to use clindamycin, uh, basically they argued that we have way more evidence. There's a much more extensive and superior body of in vitro in vivo and clinical evidence supporting its use. And also, um, although we know that there's rising clindamycin resistance, uh, there is some data to say that even with increased clindamycin resistance, that the toxin production is still working. It's still able to effectively reduce the toxin production, even if there's resistance. On the other hand, uh, the argument for linezolid replacing clindamycin uh, is again citing that clindamycin resistance and that there apparently is some data that shows that clindamycin is less able to suppress that toxin when there is resistance. And also because linezolid has a lot of uh, other advantages. So first of all, you're going to have decreased risk of antibiotic-associated adverse events like C. diff, you know, being the predominant one. Uh, but also linezolid has very, very low rates of resistance and has excellent MRSA coverage. So really, you don't have to use vancomycin if you're adding linezolid on. So you can totally get rid of vancomycin. And they actually saw a lower risk of AKI in patients who were receiving linezolid, um, theoretically because they were not receiving IV vancomycin at the same time. So less AKI, less C. diff, um, lower rates of resistance. All of these are reasons that uh, they think linezolid should replace clindamycin. And ever since this article, we've started to see more and more studies kind of looking into this question. So uh, on this uh, study right here, clindamycin plus vancomycin versus linezolid for treatment of necrotizing soft tissue infection. You can see that they looked at 274 patients uh, and then 164 patients met the inclusion criteria. And there was no difference in the rates of 30-day mortality. However, a composite outcome of death, AKI, or C. diff infection within 30 days was more common in the clindamycin plus vancomycin group compared to the linezolid group. Here's another trial right here. Uh, clindamycin versus linezolid for severe group A strep skin and soft tissue infections. And there was no difference in reduction of crit critical illness as measured by SOFA score uh, among patients treated with clindamycin versus linezolid. And given its more favorable side effect profile, linezolid may be a viable option for the treatment of serious uh, group A strep infections and should be further studied. And you can find uh, more and more studies and more and more articles looking into this question of linezolid versus clindamycin. So what's your opinion on the state of clindamycin and is it becoming an obsolete drug? In my opinion, kind of the really only reason I was using it anymore, which was for those necrotizing skin infections, is kind of being uh, superseded by linezolid, which is turning out to just be just as effective, if not better, uh, with less side effects compared to clindamycin. And so I almost can't really even think of many situations I would be using clindamycin at all anymore. It makes me wonder if clindamycin is eventually going to go by the wayside, like some of the older antibiotics that we don't really use anymore. Um, you know, I remember learning about one called chloramphenicol, which we used way back in the day, but no longer is used because it had just a very, very intolerable side effect profile. And so is clindamycin, you know, in 10, 20 years, going to be that chloramphenicol where we just don't use it anymore at all? Um, is it going to be a dying drug? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also enjoyed learning about the new data on linezolid replacing clindamycin for this toxin production. It was something that I learned very recently, so I thought I'd share it with you guys and just show you some of the data behind it because 
I just found it very interesting. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.